I've got an Easter themed tutorial for you today. I'm going to show you how to make these pretty um, tin foil embossed bunnies. So you can hang them as decorations or I've also turned them into a napkin ring which I think look quite nice on an Easter table. Um, I have templates for you and I also have a list of um, the tools that I use in the video. You can use things that you have lying around the house um, but if you want to um, I've provided links to tools which are similar to the ones that I use. So what I've done is I've saved these um, templates, saved the templates and the um, materials list to a Dropbox folder um, and then I'll put the link in the comments below the video so you can go and click on the link, it'll take you to Dropbox and then you can download the templates and the list of materials. You don't have to sign up to anything, it doesn't cost anything, um, I just like sharing. So I've printed out my um, bunnies and got my stuff set up. So I've got this sort of squishy foam affair um, which I'm going to press onto but if you haven't got that you could use a tea towel and just fold it over a couple of times um, you'll see why in a minute and I've got some of my foil something to smooth it down with and I'm going to start by just making that as smooth as possible so start in the middle and just gently rub out I say gently it's not very gentle Pressing reasonably hard, press out any wrinkles, you probably find when you do that that it sort of warps the foil a bit so I just turn it over and just go gently on the other side. once more and gentler that way. It just means it's a little bit flatter than it was. So now I'm going to cut out one of the bunnies. Oh, that noise. Really squeaky scissors. Sound like they're in pain. That's better. And then with a little bit of sellotape, I'm going to stick it to the back of the foil. Just so it doesn't move around. And then take your, if you've got these foam pads you could use one of those like I said if you haven't you can use a tea towel folded over and place it on like that so with my biro I'm going to go round the outline first of all and I'm pressing fairly hard you don't want to puncture through the foil but you see starting to get the line where I'm pressing. Nice thing about doing it with the biro is you can see which lines you've already gone over. I've got these various tools which I've picked up over the years, um, which I've just bought on Amazon embossing tools, um, and they've got different sized balls on the end. These are quite useful if you want to do more of this, um, but if you haven't got those, you could take something from home, so um, knitting needle, that's got a sort of a pointy end that you can use or this has got a kind of bigger point. So 
and you can see the difference in the lines there. Um, but I'm going to use my embossing tools and I'm going to choose a fairly big, maybe that sized ball. And just within the lines, I'm going to start off quite gently, just rubbing the area within the lines, which means that, I'll show you in a second when I turn it over. So I've just done that ear. But you can see that that ear now is raised. So you can just do it with, with the lines. You don't have to do this stage, but I quite like it that that bit's now raised. So I'm going to do the other ear. And I'm not going to go over the lines. I'm sort of, it's a bit like colouring in within the lines. When you've got a big area, you could um, you can use a, a bigger ball if you want to. So once you've done that. Because it's got pen on the back, I don't want the pen on my work surface. I'm just going to put a piece of paper down, take away my squishy pad and put it this way up. And then this, because we've now pressed on it, this is now sort of the whole thing is raised up. And just to kind of flatten it back out again, I'm just going to go round the edge with... Um, one of the ball tools. And it just means that it sort of sits flat again. You don't lose your raised area. But it... it just keeps the whole thing a bit flatter. So we've got basic shape and outline of the bunny. Then I'm going to bring back my squishy surface and I'm going to add in some of the details. So again with my biro, just literally going over the lines and colouring areas in. And then you'll see when you turn it over that it's giving you some detail. If you think you need a bit more, then you can go back in and go back over them and press a bit harder. Turning it over and check, and you see it's starting to come together. You can see the decoration there. So again, I'm going to take away my squishy pad. And I'm just going to go around and define some of the details. Um, another, I don't know if you have any at home, but cocktail sticks, quite useful. And I'm just going to gently, not pressing too hard, because I don't want to lose the raised area, but just go around the edge of um, the areas that I've just done, just to give it a bit more definition. doesn't need much. So you can see here where it started, I've lost the bit of the 
a dent, so I'm just going to gently from the back rub it and press it back up again. And again with his eye, around his eye. And then carry on just defining these shapes a little bit more. And again, where it's, you see this part of its body has kind of gone in, I'm just going to gently push it up from behind. And then I think that's ready to be cut out. So I can take my tracing off the back. And then throw that one away. And then with some little scissors, let's go round carefully cut it out. If you prefer you could use a cutting board and um, a scalpel, an exacto blade, exacto knife. Just be careful because sometimes the edges can be a bit sharp, you don't want to cut yourself. I keep any big bits like that so I can make something else with it. And there we have it, but because of the cutting out, little parts of him have sort of warped a little bit. So I'm going to go round and find the right shape. I think just flatten down some of those, the very edge bits again, just to make him sit flat, bent his ear there as well. just tinker with it till it's how you'd like it um, and then it's ready to have a hole put in it and to be hung. So to make a hole in it I'm going to bring back my squishy pad um, and I've got something sharp I have done it I've had success making the holes before with uh, a toothpick so if you don't have something like this um, so decide where you'd like it to hang from I'm going to hang it from its ear here I'm just going to push down and then keep pushing it through to make the hole a bit bigger and then I might push that through just to make it a bit bigger again. Just go slowly because you don't want to rip it, it's a shame to rip it now. And then take a bit of string or some thread. Oh, no mess of that. Ah. And there we go. little bunnies. So I'm going to try something different with this one. I thought it might be fun to make it into a kind of napkin ring to pretty up the Easter table. So I've got some ribbon. Uh, my hot glue gun is heating up. So I'm just going to cut off a length of ribbon. Um, and then make the ends pretty. So you fold them over the end and then 
from that edge cut little triangle out gives you a nice pretty end to your ribbon we do that to both ends and then find the middle which I think is back there I might just put a little mark on that just so you know where I'm going and then good old hot glue gun and get it to work I've used it for I don't know a year maybe Right, I think a bit of brute force is what's needed with this hot glue gun. There we go. Oh, the effort. Let's try that. Probably be set by the time I get to it. And squash that on. Let that dry. I haven't tested this, so I have no idea really what I'm doing. I'm sure there's probably a prettier way of tying it, but there we go, something like that. I think it'll look quite pretty on an Easter table. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have enjoyed it, it helps me out hugely if you could press the like button. Um, and if you want to know about more tutorials, then please do subscribe and then YouTube will let you know when I post another video. Also, if you have any suggestions of um, future tutorials, then just leave me a comment um, and I'll see what I can put together. And if you want to share what you've made with me, I'd love to see it. Um, Instagram is the best place to do that. I'm theodora.gould on Instagram. <laughs>